All right, so I got some nice B-roll coming your way, but I wanted to shoot the A-roll part on my iPhone because one, I wanna see what I'm talking about, and two, it gives you a nice first-person perspective. And here is this desk setup that I've created in my living room space. It is specifically designed for schoolwork and Zoom calls, as well as gaming. But before I get into any of the specifics here, I wanna first walk around it and just show you all its different angles, I guess. So here's the side view. Here is the view when you walk into my apartment. I'll go to the 2X zoom here. You can see my okay cable management job. Uh, I tried to tidy things up, but I'm not super weird about that. So I didn't like spend an eternity trying to make it look perfect. But there's that, um, there's the back here. So this is where my couch is. So this is what you can see um, from this angle. And then I'll continue to walk around here. So yeah, this is what we're working with here. And I guess the first thing to talk about is the standing desk that I have. This is off of Amazon, like pretty much everything else. So I'll leave a link to all the products that I have here in the video description. So the desk is from Vivo. It is a 55 by 24 inch standing desk. It works just as advertised. I mean, it's a standing desk. You just press one of these buttons up or down. You can set a different height, although I haven't figured that out yet. But uh, what's great is I can raise this. Hello, here we go. So I can raise this to, I think like 120 inches or units. I don't know exactly what the measurement is, but basically I can stand up and work, which is really great if you are in Zoom calls for hours and hours a week. And also, you know, typing up papers and doing assignments and such. And, you know, PC gaming, although I'd rather be sitting in a chair, which I will talk about in a minute here. But yeah, um, actually I'll switch to the front facing camera to show you the height of this desk. So this is the max height of this desk. I'm happy with it. I'm pretty average height. I'm like 5'10 and a half, 5'11, and I'm comfortably standing and working, you know, typing up notes. And I can, of course, look over here to where I'd have my Zoom window. I'll show you that in a few minutes. But yeah, this is great, uh, especially once again, if you're working at home uh, all the time, every day for hours and hours on end. Having a standing desk is really important. And I think it's a great investment at this time during the current pandemic. And of course, I can lower this back down to a sitting height and just bring up my chair here, which I will talk about momentarily. But yeah, we can bring it back down to, I think I had set it at, or I prefer to have it at like 78 or 77. And uh, this is also more comfortable. And I love the versatility of this. I don't feel like I'm super close to the ground. So my legs are comfortably touching the ground at like a 90 degree angle, if you know what I mean. And uh, yeah, here I'm comfortably sitting down, ready to work or game. And yeah, I really enjoyed this desk. And of course I will link everything that I have here in the video description. And I forgot to mention in my last clip, this goes for $349 on Amazon. Moving on to the next product here, my chair. This is from a company called High Loan. I paid like 200 for it, of course, off Amazon as well. And it's just a generic ergonomic back supporting chair. And I like it, it was easy to build. It took me like 20 minutes and uh, yeah, it's the best chair I've ever had. Uh, it ships prime, you know, you'll get it quick if you order it now or at any time. And I really like, I mean, there's not much to say about a chair, it's just a chair, but it keeps my back up straight. I realized how horrible my posture is because I was like, this chair is too upright, but then I realized I was slouching in every other chair. Like I was using one of these uh, to edit and do schoolwork at for a minute. And while this isn't a bad chair, it's definitely not good for your back long-term or for hours and hours and hours. So I'm really happy that I made this investment. I might even get another one for my desk setup at home. And I currently use this in both this room and also in my studio room, where I do a majority of my YouTube work. But now let's actually talk about what's on the desk here. And the first thing that draws my eye is my extended mouse mat. It's from Vipams off Amazon. It's like 36 inches by like 11 or 34. I don't know the exact dimensions, but it's a big mouse pad basically. I like having a continuous surface for my mouse here. I don't feel like I'm like restricted with one of those small square ones. And I enjoy it for gaming and schoolwork. And I highly recommend picking one up. It's like 13 bucks, I think. And on top of that mouse pad, we have my keyboard and mouse of choice. Both are wired because I do have a USB interface, which is a button so I can like switch inputs from my gaming laptop over here to my MacBook very easily. Um, I could have gone wireless, but I don't know. I just, I don't mind wired and I don't want to charge batteries. I just want to have everything working at all times here, although it doesn't look as clean, but that's just my personal preference. But to get to the keyboard here, this is like, I think it's called the RK Kludge K61. I believe it's 10 keyless and basically it's the best keyboard. I have ever had. Um, it has brown switches and just, I, I don't know what I've been doing. I've been using membrane keyboards and like the Apple Magic Keyboard. And this is just so great. It's like 60 bucks here. It's a really small and compact. It has RGB lighting and I absolutely adore it. I could recommend it to anybody and I'm gonna buy another one, maybe even two more for my setup at home and my actual studio YouTube setup, which I'll show off later this year. 
And then we have my mouse, which is the K602 from Red Dragon. It's just white, glossy, RGB as well. And it's very ergonomic in my hand. I believe this is like 25 bucks. I might be wrong, but I really enjoy this mouse for gaming. I play FPS shooters like Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 4. That's all I really play right now, to be honest with you. But it's really nice to use and I've had no issues with it. And I think it goes nicely with my keyboard and mouse here. And kind of going back to the mouse mat, I like how it adds contrast. Like if this was all white, like if the surface was all white, I think it'd be a little bit too much. But having this sort of takes away from that and, you know, spices things up a little bit, adds some, once again, contrast here. But anyway, moving on here, my monitor of choice is a Dell S series 27 inch panel. It is 2560 by 1440 in resolution and has a max refresh rate of 165 hertz. And that's exactly why I bought it because I can use it at 60 hertz if I want to with Mac OS as I'm doing right here. And by the way, I do prefer Mac OS at 60 hertz. I tried it with a high refresh rate and it just, it just gave me a headache. I don't know why, I'm just so used to using it at half that refresh rate. So I do that and I also don't really have a choice because I have a display port to HDMI port which goes into the 1.4 port on this monitor and if that makes any sense you might know that it can't support a higher refresh rate so i have the 2.0 port the hdmi 2.0 port plug into my gaming laptop and i can actually switch over to that right now if i you know manually change the input here so i can press one of these buttons press the input button and then go down to input source and change over to the 2.0 port and as you can see here we can bring up windows and here it is, here's my desktop here. I can have the laptop open when I want to, if I want to have like a Discord window open, but here we are on my desktop. I can game whenever I want. Uh, so I have GTA 5 over here. I got Battlefront 2, Battlefield 4, my favorite game, Battlefield 1. And this has just been a joy to use for gaming as well. With these accessories, um, as I mentioned, I love both of these. I think they go very well together and they're very well suited for gaming and working. So this is why this setup is kind of cool. It accommodates both of those activities here. But talking more about the monitor here, it is TN, but it still has really great colors and great brightness. I believe it gets up to 350 nits. And I've been very happy with this. I actually have one at home. That's why I bought another one. And I had originally bought an ultra wide monitor, but it had horrible viewing angles and just worse color and horrible brightness. So this is a really nice monitor. You don't necessarily have to have an ultra wide to get a lot of work done. So I really do enjoy this for both work and play as I continue to say here. And I will show you something that I've done. I have attached an LED strip on the back here and it was a bit of a challenge because I wanted to sort of hide that fact. So I bought black gaffer tape, even though it's not totally hidden, it still hides the ugly white LED strip. So I have it taped underneath there and plugged into the USB port here. And now that I've turned my film lights off, you can actually see what this LED strip does. Uh, I really enjoyed it at some ambient lighting here. It just makes it look more interesting and exciting and welcoming. If I turn it off here, just, I don't know, just looks sad. So when I turn it on, I just feel more at home and just more engaged in what I'm doing. I can also change it to just pure white here. So that looks pretty nice, but I do like having it at the fade uh, setting, which goes through all the colors here so I can bring it back to that. And that's what I usually keep it at. Although like for example, over here, I have the shelf. I usually keep this at a white color, just like I have in my kitchen, I have LED strips. So I'm in integrating LED lights into my you know house here in my apartment, but I really do like the RGB aspect here because it goes with the keyboard and the mouse as you can see. So yeah, guys, I really do enjoy this monitor. I own two of them, if that says anything, and it's not Amazon's choice for no reason. It has nice slim bezels, a great sleek and slim design, and not only that, great performance, you know, high refresh rate, great color, and it's a bright panel as well, so I'm very happy to have it implemented into my setup here. I think it fits very nicely. And looking below the monitor here, we can talk about my desktop speakers next. They're from a company called Movolo, I believe, and they fit very nicely into my setup. Space was an issue, as you can see here. There is limited space but there's still a little bit of wiggle room, but I couldn't have like big speakers here. So I had to go small and I went with these cause they are, you know, sort of black and white ish, silver and black goes well with my setup and they sound pretty decent. I have to say, I'll give you a little sound test in a minute here, but they're powered by USB and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, but I got like a little adapter so I could plug it into my USB interface. So these speakers will switch very cleanly from both my gaming laptop and my MacBook Pro here. So I have no issues there. And yeah, I think they look nice and sleek and I'll give you once again, a sound test right quick.
And before I forget to mention, these speakers go for around like 20 bucks on Amazon. And of course, I'll leave links to everything in the video description once again here. But moving past these, now let's talk about the laptop stands that I have here. And as you can see, they are color coordinated with both of my devices here. So they're both dark gray or space gray here. They're also metal and they're sturdy and very easy to put together. And they're from a company called Nulixi. Uh, they have rubber feet. They go for around 35 each and I'm very happy with them. And they keep my laptops elevated. And I like having my Mac look like this because I can use it for Zoom calls here. And I'll switch over to Mac OS just to show you what I mean. So here I am back in Mac OS, and if I turn to my side here to my MacBook, which is open, as you can see, my webcam is on, and this simulates what Zoom calls are like for me. But yeah, this is how I roll here. I do work, like I sort of turn off to the side and look at my main monitor, so this is what I look like, but I'm still visible on camera, which is what is required. But if I wanna engage in a breakout room or just be more engaged in general, I can physically turn here and sort of scooch up and then talk to people directly. And I like that physical movement because it just spices things up rather than just sitting at a desk like this for, I don't know, two hours and just sort of falling asleep. So I like being able to move back and forth. It keeps me focused and engaged and yeah. So this is why I have this laptop stand here. Ideally, of course, I'd rather have my laptop closed and maybe have a secondary monitor off to the side, but this is how things are gonna work for right now during this year. So here is this setup in action. I have Zoom open over here. Say hi guys. <laughs> so I can just sort of turn this way and interact. So I'm in a breakout room right now. And uh, yeah, I'm in a uh, class on Jewish studies and we're talking about some literature and movies that we were looking at. Yeah, that's about it. So do you guys have anything to say? Any messages to the people? <laughs> uh, we're just, uh, we're just chilling, typing, yeah. typing, a, uh, typing a response for our discussion. Nice. And finally, let's talk about the devices that power this setup here. Going from left to right, first up, we have my gaming laptop or my Windows laptop. It is an Asus Zephyrus M15. I thought about a G15 or a G14, but I preferred this, and this was at a bit of a discount. I got this for $14.29, and it has an Intel Core i7 10750H inside, so a six-core processor and a 2070 Max-Q, which is more than enough for the games that I'm playing. It has a 240 hertz screen, by the way, so it's really nice, and yeah, it runs my games perfectly and I have the ability to take this and you know bring it to a LAN party or to a friend's house if I want to game elsewhere. So it's versatile and of course powerful enough to provide a decent gaming experience away from home, away from my more powerful 5700 XT and 3900X equipped gaming PC. And beyond the specifications, I just really enjoy the look and feel of this laptop. It's super slim and sleek for what it is, you know, considering the hardware that's inside. I like the keyboard and the trackpad, although you're gonna wanna use a mouse when doing PC gaming. You do have to plug in and it does make some noise when you know you are running the hardware at its maximum potential, but I have no issue with it. The speakers are okay, by the way. And if you're listening to music, you're not gonna have a big deal anyway. The display looks super nice here. Very slim bezels and it's 15.6 inches, which I prefer over the 14 inch screen with the G14, I will say. And finally, here we have my school laptop of choice, the MacBook Pro 13 inch. It is a 2019 model, but it's spec the same way as the baseline 2020 model is. The only difference being the keyboard is a little bit worse. It has butterfly keys, but I really do enjoy this laptop. I've had no reason to upgrade. And if you watch my review, you just know that I appreciate its design and its function and its power. And it's more than good enough for the work that I do with school, you know, just basic web surfing and Zoom calls and such. 8 gigs of RAM and a quad core 1.4 gigahertz i5 is once again more than enough for that. And I've enjoyed this laptop thoroughly, although I am going to consider replacing it with any of Apple's ARM-based laptops coming this fall or next year. So if there's a 12 inch MacBook that you know does the job and has like an A14X, I might swap it out with that from this. So yeah. That is my setup, guys. That is about it here. Once again, I'll leave all the products listed in the video description. I hope that you've enjoyed this video here and I'll switch to the outro where I have a higher quality face shot of me. And for anybody curious, I'm using the GVM RGB by color setup that I got off Amazon as well. So I'll leave a link to that in the video description as well. And that about wraps things up here. I hope this video was helpful and fun. Once again, all the product links are in the video description and I'd appreciate it if you leave a like, comment, and of course, subscribe for more content like this. And as always, I'm Noah and I will catch you all in the next one.